So this is the Texas Colorado River, not the other Colorado River that you're probably thinking about. This is the one in Texas and it starts between Lubbock and Midland and it flows all the way down to Matagorda Bay. So we both took five days off of work so that we could kayak down the Colorado River starting in Austin, Texas and ending in Smithville, Texas. And we mainly wanted to see if it was possible because we've just never heard of anyone doing a multi-day trip down the Colorado River. And since we have the Colorado River in our backyard, we figured we might as well try it. The problem is the area around the Colorado River is mostly private property and you can't camp on the banks of the river. So after looking on Google Earth, we found out that there are a lot of islands that you could camp on and we figured that those could be potential campsites since it doesn't really flood as much on this part of the Colorado River because of all the dams that were built upstream in the 1930s. Though there's still a huge risk because weather is unpredictable. But anyways, without further ado, I want to get into the geology of the Colorado River because we're both geologists and we're always trying to find any excuse to look at geology out in the field. So I want to start off by talking about these rocks that we started seeing on day two, right around Weberville, which is also where you can stock up on some essentials like ice and water at a gas station that's just off the river. But anyways, we kept seeing all these boulders sticking out of the river, and they even created a few rapids throughout the trip, so that was pretty fun. It ended up costing us a few items that weren't strapped down well enough, so if you do this trip, I would suggest strapping down your stuff really tight. But anyways, it was weird to see these boulders because they're made out of sandstone. And pretty much everywhere in central Texas, all the hard rock is limestone, except for the Llano area. But unless you're in the Llano area, you're just going to see limestone. So seeing these sandstone boulders really close to Austin was a little weird. But the reason we were finding these sandstone boulders here is because they are pieces of the preserved coastline that was here 50 million years ago. And by preserved coastline, I mean preserved beach dunes, preserved tidal flats, preserved ripples, you get the idea. This area was where the rivers met the sea 50 million years ago. And there's a website called dinosaurpictures.org and you can see what the earth looked like at different times in the past. And as you can see, this area that we were kayaking through was the old coastline. Now the question is, why was there a sandy beach here 50 million years ago? Well, sandy beaches need a source of all that sand, so we also wanted to know where did the sand come from? Well, when the Rocky Mountains were uplifted around 80 to 50 million years ago, rain and snow and other weathering agents stripped off chunks of the freshly built Rocky Mountains, and then rivers carried all of that material all the way down to here where the land met the ocean and then it deposited all of that material in the form of sand dunes, uh, tidal flats, ripples like I mentioned earlier. And we see boulders of this all throughout the Colorado River but you can see huge walls of this preserved coastline around day four of this kayak trip. And speaking of walls, most of the walls on this trip looked like this. These are all along the trip from Austin to Smithville, and they are Colorado River flood and stream bed deposits that are about up to 20,000 years old. Geologists have dated this stuff. So the Colorado River has been flooding and depositing sand and gravel for tens of thousands of years, and geologists have looked at some of these structures in these deposits and have found that about 20,000 years ago, the Colorado River was about 1,900 feet in width, which is really crazy to think about. Um, it's big now, but it's not as big as it used to be. These deposits are mostly sand and gravel, and that's because of where they come from. So they come from the Rocky Mountains, and the Rocky Mountains are composed of a lot of granitic rocks that are super rich in quartz. and these rocks, when they break down, they break down into sands and gravels. And as it's being carried down here by rivers, the rivers are breaking them down into smaller and smaller pieces until you get the sand that we see here. 
And recently, geologists at UT have found that the Colorado is now getting most of its sediment from the Llano area. So the Colorado River used to mainly get its sediment from the Rocky Mountains, but as of a few thousand years ago, the weather in the lower Rockies has gotten much drier, and as a result, the Colorado River wasn't able to get as much of its sediment from that area. So it adapted by switching its main source of material to the Llano area where it rains more. And that area has a lot of quartz-rich granites as well, so in the stream bed, we're still getting a lot of sand and gravels, but we're also getting limestone cobbles, which come from, you know, all through central Texas. Now, because of all this material that the Colorado River has transported here, there are a ton of sand and gravel mining operations along the Colorado River, and that's because they're mining the old flood and stream bed deposits that the Colorado River has placed here. And Texas is actually the main producer of sand and gravel in the U.S. And that's directly due to the nature of the Colorado River and where it gets its source material from. Now the last thing I want to talk about is camping. So how did we camp if the land around the river is private property? Well, in Texas, any river is considered public if it has an average stream bed width of 30 feet. And the Colorado River definitely meets that criteria. So it's considered public, and that means you can swim, boat, float, fish, all that sort of stuff. And if the river is public, that means that the land within the river is also public. So these islands typically start off as point bars or areas where the river slows down and deposits the sediment it can no longer carry. And during a flood, the river is just trying to find the fastest route downstream, which means slicing through the meander bends, and this is what forms the island. And now these islands provide public areas to camp on in an otherwise privately owned area. And some of these islands even have Google reviews. But anyways, in total, it took us five days and four nights to kayak from Austin, Texas to Smithville, Texas. And along the way, we got to see so many species of birds and fish, and we saw a lot of cows and goats. And overall, we gained a better appreciation for the Texas Colorado River. And thank you for watching this video. We hope that you also gain something from this experience. So stay tuned for more stuff. Bye.